What's up, Doombots? Tony Scangili here with a quick video on team placement. Now, this is a beginner team placement guide just to get you familiarized with a couple of the keywords. There are, of course, advanced tactics, which I'm not going to be going into here because those require knowledge of meta, specific team comps, a whole bunch of things that we can't really fit in a 10 minute video. What I can tell you is the core idea of placement and what to look out for. Now, the first thing I wanna tell you about is something called flanking. Flanking is a, a attack that targets a character and every character on their row. So just to fill this up real quick with three random characters, every single character that you see on the screen is flanking to the others. So if a flanking attack would target Shan Yu or Big Bad Wolf, or Facilier, it would attack the other two characters. It's usually an entire row attack. The animation kind of shows off like everyone getting hit and it has some effect on those characters. Those attacks, the attacks that target flanking, uh, they tend to be ultimate or specials with relatively decent cooldowns. They also tend to happen in the first opening salvo of a match. So I wouldn't worry too much about having to interact with them all the time just often enough to make sure that placement is important. Uh, the other side of this, just to show you, is adjacency. Now, adjacency is any character that is within one step of another character. For example, right now there are two characters within one step of Facilier, one and two. If you were to target Shan Yu, there would only be one, just Facilier. This also factors in the blank spaces. Now, if we have a full team here, you will see that there are five characters placed and five blank spaces. Each of these spaces also count for adjacency. So if I had a summoned minion from a spell or from an ability and I placed it right in front of Big Bad Wolf, uh, that character would be adjacent to one, two, three, and anyone who happens to be behind them. Kind of think of adjacency like a little box where it hits characters that are one step inside that box. Uh, if you hit Zerg, the only character that would be hit adjacency is Shan Yu, Jangles, BB Dubs. But if you were to hit any of these three characters, you're getting max value on the attack because it's hitting multiple characters. It's kind of hard to place a team to prevent all of it. So you do have to have a little bit of knowledge regarding what you're going up against and how they're going to uh, interact. Uh, once you understand that the opponent has a lot of adjacencies but no flanking attacks or vice versa, you can kind of get a little bit of better placement. In general, uh, and there's no right or wrong team, there's some teams that are built balanced with a healer, a tank, and three damage dealers. There are some teams that are all damage dealers, and there are some teams that are three tanks with a healer and one damage dealer, and it's just trying to sustain through a timed fight. You'll see these all over the place. There's no one right answer, but let's take a quick look at this team placement and determine why I think it's one of the best placements. Or actually, uh, this team probably is the best placement. Let me explain to you why. So this team consists of a tank in Jangles, a kind of healer utility character in Shan Yu, and three big damage dealers. Doesn't matter how good this specific team is, it matters that this placement makes sense for what I'm doing. Now, let's say Zerg is the highest priority target on the team, and that's why he's here. Because if Zerg is the highest priority target, I want to make sure that when a flanking attack hits him, it hits two characters that can one, afford to take a hit, and two, are not necessarily higher priority targets. Uh, following up, an adjacency attack targeting Zerg will only hit one character, BBW, who happens to, one, have a decent amount of health, and two, have a decent way to self-sustain with a heal. So this build is making sure that my highest priority target is as far away from as many other characters as possible, and any adjacency or flanking does the least possible damage. On the other side of this conversation, we have the tank. So when my tank begins to taunt, whether by himself or through a different ability, again, the adjacency is making sure that only one character on this entire row is a priority. The flanking attack towards a taunting target will only hit about one character with a decent priority, uh, but will protect him from adjacency attacks as well as chains. Chains is the last part. 
and I wanted to get to this point to explain it. A chain attack is an attack that targets one character and has a chance or is 100% likely, depending on the attack, to hit one adjacent character as opposed to an adjacency attack that hits all characters within one step. This will only hit one. So I am making sure that anyone who is targeting Jangles that has a chain will chain to only one character and that character being another relatively tanky character that likely hasn't been taking too much damage. Now, if this were to change in any other situation, I'll just real quick put together a completely different team for you. All right, so let's take a quick look at like a kingdom team. Okay, so here we have uh, Shan Yu, Mulan, and Aladdin on the front row. So they're all flanking each other, which in general is not an absolutely great strategy as these are all of the main damage dealers. I don't want anyone to take that much advantage out of hitting one or two key characters. Uh, on the other side, uh, Robin Hood has an ability to make all flanking characters on your team hit harder with a guaranteed crit. So I'm taking a little bit of a risk by allowing other people to hit all three of my highest damage dealing characters by also making them do more damage. Uh, in addition, because this team is designed to go fast, unless I'm facing a matchup that is a mirror match or similar, it is more likely than not that I'm going to have an opportunity to act first and get away from a lot of the adjacency slash flanking issues that might come up. In addition, we have a couple of notes. Uh, while he is a phenomenal character, he pretty much stands as a buff character, so his priority is not great. That said, adjacent to him are two very important characters on this fight. So I'm going to make a quick swap and put him between uh, these two and Jasmine between these two characters. And that's a very simple reason. Both Jasmine and Aladdin have built-in evasion technology. They can make sure that their next attack, the next attack that targets them does not hit them. Jasmine has the ability to summon a tank in one of the locations that is most likely going to help, which of course is going to be in this back right corner because once Robin Hood takes a turn, he doesn't need to survive that much and you're protecting the most other characters. Uh, as again, right now, this front row is the most susceptible to flanking, which is why it works uh, as a double-edged sword with Robin Hood, but it also really helps you build out what your team's trying to do with, as I mentioned before, a placement with a summon like Trigger or a character like Jasmine will make sure that you can choose a placement and make minimize the amount of damage a lot of these characters have some degree of mitigation, but as you notice, there are no healers on this team. This is what I was talking about earlier. One of the kind of teams that is pure DPS damage, try to beat you down as quick as possible. And when you see these kind of fights, you need to know what's your attack speed, what's going to happen. In general, there are a lot of tiny little micro decisions. So there's no one 100% correct answer, especially for PVP. But for PvE, the adjacency issue is always going to be try to protect the weakest characters that do the most damage and make sure that the characters that can afford to take the hits are either adjacent to each other or do not take too much from a flanking attack. Other than that, there's no one right answer, but hopefully this was helpful in allowing you to kind of learn your own placement for your team and determine which characters are best to be protected and which characters are the best to leave and let them soak damage. Uh, comment below and let me know what you guys are doing, like what, what issues you're running into. Obviously, a lot of the early game you have Sully. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're gonna just take a quick look at that starting team that everyone has and kind of talk about its adjacency real quick. So uh, if you have Sully and Ariel, uh, they are relatively tanky. They have a pretty decent amount of health and keeping them together is a phenomenal way to make sure that flanking attacks uh, when Sully is taunting will target a handful of characters, but not too many that are important for the progression and any adjacency attack after he's taunting or chain will hit a character that is relatively tanky, can afford to take a hit, and of course can heal while you're protecting at least two, if not obviously the third, uh, damage dealer on the fight and as you progress and as you build out and get better characters like Aladdin or 
Sean Yu or oh, I couldn't tell you Scrooge McDuck, right? You're still kind of building out uh, a protection line. So this is the kind of starter setup I would use, use like just to look at the characters you get. Same thing kind of goes with the villains. I would do a very similar thing with like Gaston, Hook, Yzma as you progress and build the better uh, villain characters, but it's pretty much it. So like I said, comment below, let me know uh, what you're kind of wondering about placement or maybe if you've uh, placed a tank in the dead center giving basically free reign access to a whole bunch of characters. Uh, other than that, the adjacency and, and flanking bonuses, they really uh, are not inside something you can control, but when you go into a fight, you may look at what you're going up against and say, hmm, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna just make a quick little swap of placement and be able to cover from a giant row of adjacency attacks or something like that. So have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.